Hey guys, welcome to video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions and today I'm going to be looking at Unify Gateway Lite. This is a fairly new product from Unify and probably the best way to describe it is it's a little bit like the old USG. Feels a little bit like we've gone back in time with this device. Unlike other devices like the Dream Machine or a Dream Router, Cloud Gateway Ultra, etc., there is no controller software running on this device. So you do have to have the controller software running somewhere else in order to set this up. A really good uh, use of this would be if you've if you've got a USG and you're looking to upgrade, then it'd be good to put this product in because essentially you're just doing a light for light swap, um, but with a newer, more capable device. If you're doing it for the first time, then you just have to think about where you're going to have that controller software running. So you could buy a Cloud Key Gen 2 Plus if you wanted to. It's a very expensive way of doing it, but you could do that. You could also use Unify's own hosting service or you could host yourself. So you could have the software running on something like a NAS drive. You could buy a Raspberry Pi and set it up on there. Or you can use like a Windows machine or a PC of some sort to set the controller software up and then, and then add this device to that controller. That's what I'm gonna to do today. That's a really cheap and easy way to do it. The downside of doing it that way is that the PC has to be running with the controller software in order for you to give updates and get information from this uh, gateway if as soon as you shut that PC down or you close the network application it's going to stop working in that sense the gateway will still function it will just do whatever you last hold it to do so it continues to work as a gateway but you don't get that same experience you get from a software controller that's running all the time like you get on some of the other devices I'm not sure about this product I don't love it I think it's got its place but I don't love it I, I would go personally for the cloud gateway ultra over this device but I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to set it up and we'll see how it gets on. Okay, so let's look at the specs. Then I'll go to the setup um, and then we'll sort of talk about my final thoughts. Okay, so I'm on the Unify store um, and it took me a little while to find this actually. It's sort of tucked away. It's under accessories and tech. Um, and then from there, you have to go to gateways and then small scale. So it's it's tucked away a little bit. So this is the gateway light. It's £123.60, including VAT which is actually quite a bit more expensive than the Cloud Gateway Ultra. Um, you can see straight away they mention the USG here. It says the USG. So that kind of adds weight to the argument. This would be a good replacement for the USG if you're just doing a light for light swap. And it's got 10 times the routing performance. So it's definitely going to be an upgrade. Um, so in that sense, it would be a really good option. And then straight away, we talk about how you're going to manage it. So there's, as I said, there's no controller software on this. You've got the Cloud Key official Unify hosting, or you can use the network um, server, which is what I'm going to be doing today. If we just talk about this in terms of cost effectiveness, the cloud key is down here. It's pretty expensive. Cloud key uh, plus is the only one they do now, and that's £190.80, including VAT. So it's really adding a lot of additional money to this uh, gateway if that's the option you're going to use. Obviously, if you've already got a cloud key, that's not an issue. Official Unify hosting is also pretty expensive. I haven't got the prices here, but I know for a fact it's pretty expensive. Um, so the cheapest way to do it is going to be to self-host it. This uh, router has got, a, or this gateway has got one LAN port and one WAN port. So if you want any more than one hardwired connection, then you're gonna have to have a switch, which for me is also a bit of a downside. It's got one WAN port, um, so there's no dual uh, internet connection here. You can't have redundancy on your internet connection. You've just got that single WAN port. It's USB-C powered, which you see on the back here. I've actually got the EU version, so I'm gonna need to use an adapter. And there's a reset button on the back as well. In addition to Gateway Lite, we've also got the Gateway Max. The Gateway Max is essentially the same thing. It's just got some more um, performance and it's got some 2.5 uh, gig ports rather than the gigabit ports. I think there's actually more ports on this one as well. Yeah, you get more LAN ports. So that could be an option as well. It's a little bit more expensive. Okay, so let's look at the setup. Okay, so I'll just show you what you get in the box. Um, I've already had this open, but just open it up and you've got the quick start uh, QR code there. Pretty standard packaging for Unify. And then you get the nice little gateway here. It is a very nice looking product. It feels really um, quite solid. It's got no screen on the front, but it is an LED that uh, lights up when you power it on. On the back here, we've just got the LAN port and the WAN port, the USB-C power and the reset button. There's no mounting on this. It is literally just uh, gonna sit somewhere and that's pretty much it. So you don't get a lot else in the box really. It's just the power cable. 
um, and I'm going to need to use a EU adapter for this one just a little USB-C okay and that's it in the box there what I'm going to do on this is I'm just going to plug a 5G router into here to get a DHCP type internet connection off this and then um, we'll get it set up and plug my PC into into the LAN port there okay so let's get on with the setup okay so I'm on my laptop now um, and I've gone to um, the Unified Downloads uh, Center, which I will put the link in the comments. Um, and at the moment, obviously, this laptop is connected to the internet. I'm not plugged into the gateway yet because I need to do that download. So we need to do that before we get the gateway set up. So just make sure you have got an internet connection available for this part. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to scroll down until we find the Windows version, which you can see here, um, last updated on 3rd of June. And then I'm just going to click on the download button there and that will begin the download. Okay, so once we've got the download done, I'm just going to click on that. And that will get started. So we're just going to say yes. And then we're going to install. That'll take a couple of minutes. Okay, and then once it's done, we want to start that service. So we'll leave that box ticked and we'll just press finish. And now we can see it's starting. Okay, and then once it's ready to go, we can just press manage um, server in browser. So we'll just click on that. All right, so you can give it a name. So I'm just gonna call it YouTube. Um, but you can call it whatever you want. Select your region, agree to the terms. And then press next. Um, now, if you haven't got an account already, you can just press the create a account down here, or if you already have a Unify account, then you can just log straight in. So I'm gonna do that now. And then once we've done a verification and signed in, then it will set up the server for us. Okay, so that's our server set up. So now what we can do is we can plug this computer into um, the cloud gateway. So I'm gonna use a hardwired connection there because obviously there's no Wi-Fi connection on this gateway. So I'll do that now. Okay, sorry, I just realized I hadn't put my um, three mobile router into bridge mode, so I had to put it into bridge mode first. Um, so I am connected. Now, because I'm using a DHCP type connection here, I don't need to do anything. The internet connection has been automatically detected by the gateway, so it's good to go. If you have a different type of connection like a PPPoE connection or maybe a static um, IP connection, then you might have to input that into the router before you can add it to the controller. And to do that, you just go onto a new tab, just type in the IP address 192.168.1.1, um, press enter, and that will take you to um, the router's login page where it will be asking you for the route uh, for that internet information. It will say something like not connected. You go to advanced internet connection types, and then you input the data in there. So if it doesn't connect the right way, then you haven't got a DHCP one. So I'll just close that. Now I'm back in the network control. If I go to Unify devices here, because I'm on the same LAN, because I've got my laptop plugged into the LAN port, if I just go here, you can see the gateway light here. So I can just click to adopt that and then that will adopt that gateway light. And then once we've adopted it, it'll probably need an update as they normally do. So we just do that as well. Okay, so now the update's been applied and we are good to go. So the gateway's all set up. So what I'll do is I'll just show you some basic bits and pieces about what we can use this for. So obviously at the moment we've only got the gateway light, we haven't got anything else. Um, really, as I mentioned, you really wanna be adding a switch and some wireless access points to this to make the most of it. But we can certainly start setting up the network. So if I go down, first of all, down to my settings cog here. Um, and I can go to internet, we can just check that quickly so we can just see the type of internet connection we got. So that's our uh, primary WAN there. Um, we can see it's three mobile connection and that is DHCP. Um, networks here, so we've got a default network of uh, 1.0. Um, if we want to add some more, we can just type, uh, click this button here, new virtual network, and just give it a name. So if I just call this YouTube VLAN um, and with router is a gateway light, we're gonna use IPv4. Um, you can auto scale it or you can change this. So if you wanna give it a specific subnet, say for example, you wanted to give this a 200. Um, number of IP addresses usable in that, um, 254 by default. You can increase that if you wish and it'll cross subnets. Um, and then it's automatically updated the range there. So 
Then you can go further down. If you want to add some uh, specifics to this, then you can just click the menu button. I normally like to make the subnet and the VLAN number the same, so we can give that 200. If you want to make it a guest network, you can do that. And basically what that's going to do is it isolates it and puts the guest uh, rules in place. You can also just isolate the network. So if you don't want this VLAN to talk to another VLAN, um, it, which it will do by default, then you need to tick this box here. Um, obviously you can give internet access. This content filtering is quite good. So if for example, you're setting up a VLAN for your kids or maybe for work, then you can put these uh, predefined rules on them and then it will um, it will mean that they can't access that type of content. Um, and that is about it. We've got the other thing you can do is if I go down here, we can change this DHCP range as well. So if you wanted to make it slightly bigger, you could do um, the, this DHCP garden is quite useful as well. If you're worried about having another router on your network, you can do that as well. So down here, we've got the DNS servers. So if you want to change your DNS servers, because at the moment that's automatically picking that up from your provider. So if you click off auto, auto on there and you can just put in some DNS servers, you can put in quite a few here. So if I just put in Google and Cloudflare and then you can add this VLAN. So that VLAN is now using, uh, it's got its own 200 number ID um, and it's all set up and ready to use. And you can do that for, you know, pretty much as many um, VLANs as you want. And then it, once you set up your um, Wi-Fi, so assuming you get Wi-Fi networks and you get some access points set up, you can associate those Wi-Fi SSIDs to the specific VLAN. So that's quite useful. Okay, so let's look at some other bits and pieces. So I'm gonna go into the VPN. This is um, the bit about the gateway light that I don't love. So it's great to have WireGuard and OpenVPN. Um, these are really good services and I, I do use them a lot. The thing that's missing from this gateway light is teleport and that's because it's not a console. Um, the reason why uh, teleport is quite useful is if because you if you're trying to VPN um, past uh, consumer grade NAT or um, double NAT, then it's quite tricky using WireGuard and OpenVPN. If you use um, if you use teleport, then it will get past that. So a good example of that would be Starlink. Starlink uses consumer grade NAT, um, and it just means that using um, WireGuard and OpenVPN is tricky. Not impossible, but tricky. Um, but you do still have those VPN services, so that's that's really good um, to see. Um, the other thing is security. We've got sort of all the stuff that you'd have in uh, in your normal co consoles, so uh, it's pretty easy to set up. Actually, you can put all sorts of traffic rules in. Um, we've got simple, advanced, um, and it's it's a pretty good uh, way of sort of filtering out what you don't want in. So, say for example, you didn't want to use those family and work um, rules, you can put the you can put your own ones in. So. For example, sometimes clients ask me to drop, uh, block YouTube um, and you can do that in these settings here. I'm not gonna go too much into that. I have got a video on how to block YouTube. Um, so you can check that out and I'll put that in the corner now. Okay, so we've got bits about routines. I'm not gonna go too much into this. Again, it's uh, gonna be dependent on what you want to do. Um, and that is pretty much it. So the gateway is good to go. The other thing I'm just gonna show you actually very quickly is you will notice um, down here that there is no speed test option. So currently you cannot speed test uh, from the router on this device, um, which is a little bit annoying actually. It's, it's a feature that's only available on consoles. Um, so yeah, that's one of the things that does irritate me slightly about this device along with the teleport. Other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same as any other unified gateway. Um, it's it's a nice um, little device. Okay, so let's get on to my final thoughts. Okay, so as you saw, the setup was pretty simple. And as I sort of mentioned in the intro, this is a really easy way to set it up. And it's a very cost-effective way. Obviously, we didn't pay anything for that software. It's a free download. And if you've got a machine running all the time, um, then that's a great way to do it. If you're gonna be shutting the machine down, just remember that you're not gonna have that um, control of access. So it's better to have it on something that is continuously running. NAS drives are really good for this, actually, because they are always running. So overall, what are my sort of thoughts on this gateway? Well, we have installed a few of these. We've probably got about four or five of them in. Um, they're not bad. They, they certainly have a place. Um, I do like them from a sort of unified perspective. They've got everything that you need, apart from that teleport that I mentioned and the speed test, slight annoyance, but not the end of the world. Um, I struggle with this device from a cost perspective. And the, the problem is, is it's one part 
of several parts you're going to need. So if you just want to put in a gateway or like I said earlier, replacing the USG, then this is a good option. If you want to build a network based on this device, then it gets a little bit more complicated. Because first of all, as we say, as we've just seen, we haven't got any control of software running on it, so we have to set that up somewhere else. It's only got one LAN port, so we haven't got many options there. Effectively, you're almost certainly going to have to use a switch to get those extra connections. It's got no Wi-Fi, so you're probably going to need at least one wireless access point, um, which again is going to need probably a switch. So suddenly, your cost starts adding up, and it, to me, that just doesn't make sense because if you get something like the Cloud Gateway Ultra, that is got a controller built in. It's also got four LAN ports rather than just one. So you might not necessarily need a switch. It doesn't do Wi-Fi in fairness, but you could go for something like the Unify Express if you wanted a device that does Wi-Fi. But so for all those reasons, this just doesn't really work for me, this, this uh, gateway light. But as I said, there will be scenarios where it works and we have installed them. I have no problem with it as a product in terms of how it functions. I think it's very reliable and great as all the other Unify kit is, but it's not gonna be my first choice. Okay, so that's it for me. Thank you very much for watching the video and I'll see you next time.